Okay, so I've added my fragrance. I'm just going to pour off some soap from my drizzles. So I think I'm like cooler, cooler than usual anyway. I'm usually really bad at waiting for oils to cool down. So I've just uh, put this bucket into an ice bath so it pulled it down quicker. But usually I'm really impatient my soap way too high, which is why I always end up with problems. <laughs> because I soak way too hot than I should be. So anyway, whatever. <laughs> That's me. Okay. I'm going to use this mixture in my base and this is a blend of titanium dioxide, green oxide and ultramarine and this gives a really nice herbal sort of greenish colour. It's like, a, like that kind of sea, sea green kind of a colour. I'm a real sucker for all of those sort of muted sage greens and creams and things like that. I really like that at this time of the year. I'm just going to stick blend. Okay, now I have some of the colours. I've got white and I've got two micas. So I'm just, just add the white if I can. So decided to sit on the bottom. I've just mixed this in with some water because I've done a major discount in this soap. So, well not major, it's just uh, quite, quite large. Larger than usual anyway. This one is a teal green mica. Reserve a little bit for the top. And then this one is a vibrant blue mica. These are from Nurture. I like those the most. They seem to be the most accurate for colours in cold process, anyway very important that they don't mould when you've got a design in your mind, you know. Anyway, I'm going to show you my new mould I made last Sunday out of some scrap wood I had in the garden. Matt caught me in the act. <laughs> so it's this one and it's a uh, long, tall, skinny and it takes about two and a half kilos of soap. So I'm going to use that today. It took me about half an hour to make this mould, amazingly, but yeah, it's really good. So let's pull this base in. some blue. And some white. And some teal. mould's really big so I have quite a lot of batter left over in the end. So what I can do is make a smaller batch in a second because I'm not going to need all that. Okay now I can use, I use my trusty little swirly tool. some garden wire that Matt got for me that I just used to do these.
top. I don't want to do too much because I'm going to save a bit and do another another little bit. So I'll have a bit of that. And I can do an in the pot swirl for the last piece to go in the other mould. So we'll have a bit of that there. And let's swirl the top a bit. Just incorporate those. some of these micas and we'll have a mica in oil swirl across the top. I love that effect, it's just so pretty. Do the blue. Tissue. Okay. Now I'm just going to get move this one out of the way. I'll take pics at the end. But I'm going to move this. I can't believe how fluid that soap is. <laughs> I did prepare a mould so I can pour these other colours. Hopefully we've got a. It's not too thin yet. Maybe. All right. Let's get that like that. I need to stir that white a bit more. Just pour in this into this mold. Still quite a lot left in there. Okay. Oh, I might have a bit of mica left, so we can do the top of this one. I don't really need to do anything else. It's going to be a bit lower than usual, this one. So we might have some bars that are tall, some bars that are smaller. So there might be two choices on the website when it goes live. It won't go live for another few weeks yet. About three weeks. I usually cut off about a week of the cure time by doing the discount I do. And then by the time it ships, it's ready anyway. Like after four weeks, you know. So there we have Om soap. And I'll take some pictures for the end. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, hello everybody. I'm back to cut the soap. I have had a nightmare this morning. The I was just getting ready for my day and the dog decided to take one of my nutrition bars out of my bag while I was getting ready. I didn't hear her doing it. I heard her getting up to something downstairs, but she took a nutrition bar out of my bag and ate the whole thing, which is, um, <laughs> it's got cocoa and raisins in it. So 
two things that are poisonous to dogs or toxic to dogs in they have to be in quite high levels and it wasn't really but I did take her to the vet because I was in a panic to start with so I thought I better get her down there and um, see what they say so I, I mean I did ring them first and they said well you can either try and make her sick yourself or you can bring her down and we'll be we'll make her sick to get it all out so uh, that's what we did <laughs> well I did because Matt was at work today so I took her down and um, yeah, they made a six. I've been at home all this morning waiting for her to sort herself out. <laughs> anyway, this is the soap I did yesterday. I'll put all the video all together, but um, yeah, I was dying to come and cut it because I wanted to see what it was like. And yeah, I couldn't. So I've just sat at home and Matt's got back and now I just came to cut this and I've got to go and do some shopping. So it's a bit long for this mould, but this is the for the cutter sorry but this is the soap i've got to do sort of trimming on the bottom because my mold i don't have a silicone liner for the base so i'm gonna trim off the bottom and the sides just to neaten it all up a bit so i'll do that in the end but i really like the way they turned out it's pretty there's the tops haven't really got much um, soda ash, and I usually do. I usually get quite a bit of soda ash on my soaps, but I haven't this time, which is uh, good news. It came out pretty nice. It's um, yeah, some nice swirls there. I think I'm cutting these just a little bit too wide. I'm just going to push this in a little bit, maybe like that. I've got some new packaging coming for these size soaps. They're um, like a bag that's like a box. It's kind of I'll show them when I've got them. But um, yeah, I needed to find something that would be suitable for this size because my soap wrap pieces won't be long enough for me to wrap these soaps in, and plus the labelling and stuff wouldn't be the same size as my other soaps. So we will um, change that up a bit when time comes. I've only got a couple like this made so we'll see. It came out pretty. I like the base colour. Definitely looks like paint. Like a paint colour. And I use paint cards like colour charts for colour ideas quite often. I like all the um, posh ranges <laughs> like the vintage and heritage colors are really nice so i use like farrow and ball color cards to have a look at colors that i really have always loved and they help you know give your like give you ideas for what to put together and then of course there's design siege which a lot of people use and i have a, i really like the site color lovers because it gives you patterns as well as um, colours to put together. So these came out pretty nice. The other little bar was a bit soft when I took it out of the mould. So I'll we'll see. I might have to cut those. Well, I will cut those a bit thicker. So that they are like the same weight. These are quite chunky bars anyway, but um, that's kind of nice in there. So my swirl tool, the tool I use to do the swirls, is quite thin. I don't use like a thick gauge, you know, it's kind of, they're quite thin wire, so you get sort of, um, yeah, very thin, wispy sort of swirls with that. I'm going to make some more of them, like I can use like um, cabling for speakers and things like that. You can find all that in the hardware store and I shall have another go at making some things like that. So I like to improvise and find ways of doing stuff rather than having to buy, like, you know, buying swirling tools and things like that just isn't really me. It's too expensive. 
you know, it's okay. Like, so it's nice that soap suppliers offer, so, oops, offer um, things like that, but I don't, I don't want to pay for them. I'd rather just make my own, you know? Not that they're really expensive, but I just, you know, I like making my own and improvising, really. So, let's get this one. I'll see, oh yeah, it is. It's kind of crumbly. I think I might have to leave that. Yeah, I'm going to leave it a couple of days because I don't think it's going to be any good. It's too crumbly on the base. It could just be the mixture. I'm not really sure. I'll try one. Let's get a big thick piece and see. Yeah, it's crumbling. So I'm going to leave it for as long as I can. But this is, it's not too bad, but it's not quite ready to cut. But they're nice little chunks, almost like a square. So they're nice. But yeah, they'll need to tidy up. So I'm going to leave that one. But this is what it looks like inside and on the top. It was just what I used. I used the leftovers to make that. So I'm going to leave it and cut it in a couple of days. Okay, so that is the cut of OM. So, and I'll be back some other time. Okay, bye.